Hi and welcome to this video in the QPSMR Companion Going Deeper series. And in this video we're not going to look too much at how you do weighting but the different types of weighting so that you can ascertain which type you might need. If you're looking for a video that takes you through the steps you need to, to carry out weighting in the QPSMR Companion, you'll need to look at a separate video which takes you through those steps. So in this video, we're going to look at the three types of weighting that there are you that are used in market research and specifically how you do those or use those within QPSMR Companion. So we're going to start with the one which is perhaps uh, not thought of always as weighting, and that's volumetric weighting. And just as we go through the three types of weighting that you get in market research, there's volumetric weighting. Now that's where you're weighting tables by a value in your data. So you might weight uh, some, a table or some tables by the amount of money spent so that your table's no longer age by gender, for example. It's age by gender, but it's been weighted by the amount of money that each person spent. So that's called sometimes quantity weighting tables. It's sometimes called volumetric tables. And indeed, I've heard it with other names as well. But that's the first type of table we're going to look at. The next two types of weighting we're going to look at are different but have a similar principle in that you're weighting respondents to represent a population that you're trying to, trying to uh, match. So you might, in a simple example, uh, survey 60% males and 40% females, but actually in your tables or your analysis, you want 50% of each, 50 males and 50% females. And to achieve that, you would weight your data uh, up or down accordingly to make sure that you get back to that 50-50 split. Now, target weighting and rim weighting are slightly different, and we're going to be looking at those in a little bit more de uh, detail in just a while. So let's start with volumetric uh, weighting first of all. I'm going to open up a project here and open up my project. And we're going to use this project uh, for all of the uh, examples of weighting. So this project very simply has question one on the questionnaire, a yes, no question. Question two is an integer. So that's the number of bicycles owned. Question three is, ge sorry, gender is the third item, age and region. So let's, so we've got these questions set up. We've got some data. I think it's 13 records that have been prepared already. The table that you would produce or might produce if you wanted volumetric data tables would be perhaps an analysis of gender by age, but rather than just doing a cross tabulation based on respondents, you want to weight it by the number of bicycles that each person owns. So if somebody owns one bicycle, they count once into that table. If they own three bicycles, they count three times. So that's very much like the example I talked about with expenditure. So this is a simple question. So how do we get that sort of analysis in QPSMR Companion? Well, it's already been prepared here for this example. So again, if you want to learn how to set these up from scratch, there is a separate video that takes you through all these three types of weighting. So our first table is just gender with no column. So that's going to produce just a respondent based table as normal. But our second table here, you'll see down the bottom, it's got a quantity weight of Q2. So this is going to weight the, the, the figures in that table by the number of bicycles they own. So if we run this now, and click OK, we come up with two tables. So the first table shows 13 respondents, seven male, six female. If we go to the second table, it's now got 13 people in the table, but the total number of bicycles is 47 and 20 are owned by males and 27 by females. So now we've got somewhat different data because the table is, has been incremented, or weighted by a quantity, and that quantity is the number of bicycles. And you can see roughly that on average, in this particular data, people have got between three and four bicycles on average. But of course, one person might have 10 or 20 of those. All right, so that's how we do volumetric tables or quantity weighted tables. Let's now look at weighted tables where you're weighting 
your respondents to some target that you're trying to reach. So I'm going to start with target weighting and open up the same project. Now in this project, I've got an extra variable here you can see called WT underscore matrix. And what that variable is, is the two genders within the three age groups. So if we explore this variable, you can see what I've got here is male 16, 34, 35, 54, 55 plus 15, sorry, female 64, 34, and the other two age categories. So in other words, all the combinations of the two genders and the three ages. Now, what I want to do in this particular example is I want to weight each of these six types of respondent or six categories of respondent to some target. So the way I do that is I go into my data, I go into my weight data pro, uh, part of the program, I open the data file, it's the same 13 records, here they are listed down here, 1 to 13, just going to move that up slightly so you can see it, and as I've already done this work, I'm actually going to load in the weighting file, and it's stored in a file called weighting.xml. And you can see here, what I've got is I've got 13 respondents. The first two fall into the first category of weight matrix, which is the youngest age group for males. I've got these two records that fall into the next category within WT underscore matrix, and so on, down for the uh, different ca uh, categories. There's six different categories. And what it's giving me in here is the weight for each of those types of people. Now I can recalculate that if I wanted to. I could, if I had more data, for example, I would prepare the file. I would calculate the weights. And you can see I've got the same figures I had just now uh, produced. So what this is actually doing, if we just widen some of these columns, it's saying that I've got 13 respondents. I've got three from the first category and two from all the others. And I want to weight my data to 20% in the first category, 20 in the second, 20 in the third, 20 in the fourth, 10 in the fifth and sixth, which as you will see adds to 100%. So what the program's gonna do for me, what QPS is gonna do behind the scenes here, is it's gonna say, okay, so this the percentage of records I've got in this category is three divided by 13, and I'm gonna scale it to 20% by applying a weight. Now if we go across here, you'll see that we've got the weighting factors coming out as well. So it'll actually do everything for me and apply those weights. Now I can get a report of those by producing a summary. And sure enough here, you can see that uh, everything is weighted to the figures that I want. So there we go. And it also tells me here that the effective sample size, which is an important figure, what the effective sample size means, it's the sample that if you had a perfect matrix and didn't need weighting, that would be the same number of respondents that you'd need to interview to get those targets. So they could have interviewed 12, 12 uh, respondents if they'd have got the right sampling. All right, so let's close that. And you can save all these files, of course. And Let's just go back, view the weights file. There's the weights file that you, which you can save as a CSV file if you want to, so you can see what weight each respondent is getting. So this is doing target weighting. Now this is different from um, respondent, uh, sorry, rim weighting. Rim weighting is the next example I'm gonna go through. and. A, we will work through full examples of these in a separate video. So we're gonna close this, not save it, quit again. So let's see this in action. So if we open up some tables that again, I've got already prepared. Now you'll see in here, I've got one table, it's gender by age. But I have got two important formats I'm using here to check that my target weighting is working. 
I've used NRTV to turn off column percentages, but RTT will percentage each cell on the total. Now, by doing that, I can check that those targets of 20, 20, 20, 20, 10 and 10 are achieved. So let's run this. Click OK. And here's my one table, which should hopefully show that my data is correct. So again, remember the not comma percentages is not three percentage on five as you get in most tables. This is three percentage on the 13. And if we click on this cell, you'll see it's not actually three. That's a rounded three. It's actually 2.6, naught, 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 three, nine, eight, seven, one. So these figures are not whole numbers anymore. They are, if you like, uh, with, with, uh, you know, floating point with decimal places. But you can see that the waiting procedure has achieved what I wanted. 20% males of this age group, 20% males of that age group, 20% males of this age group, 20% of females of that age group, but only 10% of females in these two age groups. So my waiting procedure has worked. And again, we're going to show you how to do all that from start to finish in a separate video. And finally, we're going to look at rim weighting to see if that's the type of weighting that you want. So I'm going to close this move to the rim weighting example, open up, I've opened up the wrong file there, open up the rim weighting example, same procedure again, same uh, records, you'll see there's a variable called weight here which actually has saved the data because I've already done this, but rim weighting is somewhat different. Now let me explain where rim weighting is different, let's open up the rim weighting, load in the weights now where rim weighting is different is that if you look up here whereas before I produced a matrix of the two genders within the three age groups this time you can see I've got gender separate and age separately as well so I'm not doing a matrix if you like of two by three I'm actually treating the two variables that I'm putting in here independently, gender as one rim, as we call it, or one set of targets, and age as a second set. Now, what the program does then is go through and calculate targets that are weights, rather, that will reach and achieve those particular targets. And this is fully explained in a separate video that we have, and with documentation as well. So if you're interested in finding out exactly how rim weighting works. We do have documentation on that. But you can see here that we've carried on that procedure and we've got a series of different weights for our 13 records that achieve the targets that we're looking for here. So if we open up this column, my target here was gender 50-50, but age 40, 40 and 20. So they're, if you like, independent targets that we're work working towards. Now the targets needn't be percentages, they can be whole numbers, so if you're working perhaps to wait up to the population of a country, that might be 15.3 males or something like that, if the population of the country is 15.3 million males. It could be any other targets to represent your customer base or whatever else it might be that you want to weight to. And similarly as before here, we get the effective sample size. So you can see that that's 12.1, the effective sample size here. And now if we produce a couple of tables, I'm not saving that work. I'm just going to open up a tables file. And you can see I've got two tables, one for age, one for gender. Again, they're independent this time. They're not being cross-analyzed. Run those tables. And if we look at the gender question first, you can see the weighting has achieved 50-50. So even though it's seven, uh, seven respondents and six respondents, uh, it's 50-50. And if we go back and look at table one, the age question, you can see again, I satisfactorily get 40% my, uh, sorry, 16 to 34 year olds, 40% 30-54, and 20%. 55 pluses by weighting the data. So this looks like a successful weighting operation again. If you want to know more about how to do these different types of weighting, they're covered in the next video, which I'd ask you to watch if you really want to get into the details of actually taking this through from start to finish.
Thanks for joining me.